It's being called New Delhi's air apocalypse. The air is so toxic in the Indian capital, a city of 18 million people, that a public health emergency has now been declared. Schools are shut. All construction work has been ordered to stop and flights have been diverted or delayed. On Sunday, the air quality index hit its worst level for the year at 494. That's nearly 10 times the safe level of 50. Delhi's chief minister says the pollution has reached critical levels. There is smoke everywhere and people, including youngsters, kids, the elderly, they're all finding it difficult to breathe. Eyes are burning. The pollution is that bad. Well, private cars with number plates ending in an odd number have been temporarily banned from the roads. That's taken away a chunk of the more than 10 million registered vehicles in New Delhi. A government study says the transport sector is the biggest contributor to the city's pollution levels. Well, also being blamed farmers from neighbouring states. They burn their stubble at this time of year after October to clear their fields for the coming winter crop. Anshal Vora has more now from New Delhi. That's the iconic Rashtrapati Bhavan or President's House in New Delhi. It's a tall, massive building and a tourist spot. But today, one can barely see it. It is engulfed in smog, as is the rest of the city. I've been standing here for barely 20 minutes. My eyes are burning and the back of my throat is itching. And it isn't just me. Doctors in the city say that many more patients are visiting them with ailments that can be attributed to air pollution. I've been using this mask for a couple of days. It's a bit inconvenient for sure. But when I'm traveling on the road, then with this pollution, my eyes start to water. The Delhi government has taken a step to reduce the number of personal vehicles on the roads of the national capital and hence reduce vehicular pollution. The volunteers who've been deployed on this traffic square tell us that the people actually are following it. The government has also given these masks, but Few people are wearing it. It is rather inconvenient. But mainly as long as farmers in neighboring states do not stop burning the stubble, pollution in the national capital is expected to continue to remain very severe. Well, let's pause for a second to try to understand exactly how damaging the air in New Delhi is today. Let's remind you how it rates on the Air Quality Index. That measures the health risks associated with air pollution. Under 50 is generally considered to be good. 40 to 100 is moderate. Above that, there are serious health risks, with everything above 400 considered to be hazardous. For comparison, Berlin, the German capital, a city of around 3.5 million people, sits around 21 on the same index. New Delhi, on the other hand, is right now sitting between 400 and 700 in some parts of the city. That far exceeds the limit that anyone should be breathing. Karthik Ganeshan is a research fellow at the Council on Energy, Environment and Water. He says farmers are contributing to the smog, but they need help to move to greener practices. The problem of air pollution in Delhi is a multi-pronged one, right? It's not just one item. What we're hearing today is, of course, that Farmers in Punjab are burning crop residue and as a result, air quality in Delhi has deteriorated. But for much of the year, more than 300 days out of the 365, Delhi is actually breathing really bad quality air. Right? It never really gets the news the way it does in the winter months. So clearly the problem is much beyond just the issue of uh, you know, the crop burning that happens you know, for about four weeks or so in the winters. There's a host of problems that need to be addressed really if you have to get this right. Blaming the farmer is sort of like not exactly the best thing that one can be, uh, do at this point in time. Uh, but the fact is that they have been incentivized by the cheap availability of basically free electricity and uh, the water that they're able to pump with it and then grow a crop that's technically not sustainable in the part of the country where it is being grown, which is rice, right? And as a result, what's really happened is that, you know, uh, it's, lead to, it's led to a depletion of the water table and probably they won't be able to cultivate rice to the extent that they are in another decade or so because the water table would have gone really low. Right? And it's because of the fact that there's this rice wheat crop cycle that they're doing that we're seeing the problem uh, currently. And the solution really lies in sort of going back to, I think, uh, you know, multi-cropping and diversifying what you actually produce uh, through the year and not relying just on one crop.